Abib Shalom. Amibe Saris Dabi, my Isha Baki is here with us as well. Before we go any further, we want to have the blowing of the shofar. Then we're going to have our opening song in which we don't own the rights to. And then we're going to have our Pledge of Allegiance all in that order. Salvation with salvation, true, true, equity, equity, liberty, liberty, and justice for all, and justice for all who hear his commandments, who hear his commandments, and do them, and do them. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I praise and thank the Most High for how He kept us during the course of the week, me and my Isha, and you as well. Praise and thank him for moving mercifully and mightily in the midst of our lives, our hearts, our minds, our spirits, and our souls. Praise and thank him for allowing his mercy and his grace to be upon each and every one of us. Before we go any further, we want to get into our, our first scripture. Our first scripture today is from Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7. It is written. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Hallelujah. Our next scripture this morning is from, this afternoon rather, is from Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. It is written, he that turns away his ear from hearing Torah 
even his prayer shall be abomination. Hallelujah. Our next scripture is our partial, our Torah portion from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. It is written, and El spake all these words, saying, I am Yah thy El, which have brought thee forth out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other El before me. You shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yah, thy El, am a jealous El. Visit then the iniquity of the Abbas upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of Yah, thy El, in vain. For Yah will not hold them guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yah thy El. In it you shall not do any work, you nor your son nor your daughter, thy man Ebed, thy maid Ebed, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yah made heaven and earth to see, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, Yah blessed the Shabbat day and holiday. Honor thy Abba and thy Amma, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yah thy El gives thee. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor, you shall not covet thy neighbor's house, you shall not covet thy neighbor's Isha. Nor is man he bay, nor is maid he bay, nor is ox, nor is ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hallelujah. At this time, we want to enter into prayer. And I'm going to kneel and face his holy oracle. Mm -hmm. Father Yah, as we kneel before thy throne of mercy and grace, we spread forth our hands unto thee, praising you and thanking you, Father Yah, for another day, Father. We praise and thank you, Father Yah, for how you kept us during the course of this week. You blessed our uprisings, down sittings, our going outs, and our coming ins. We praise and thank you, Father, for allowing your will to be done. As all week long, we invoked your will over our lives, Father Yah. So it is your will for us to be here in this place at this time, at this day, Father Yah. We seek forgiveness of sins as we're reminded of the words in Daniel, in Daniel 9, that says, Yah, the great and dreadful well, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy ebeds done our bees, with spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, our abbas, and to all the people of the land. O Yah, lawfulness belongs unto thee, but unto us confusion of faith, as at this day. To the men of Yehuda, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near, and that are far off through all the countries where thou hast driven them, because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. O Yah, to us belong confusion of face to our kings, our princes, our abbas, because we have sinned against thee. To Yah, our El belongs mercies and forgivenesses, though we have rebelled against them. Neither have we obeyed the voice of Yah El to walk in his Torah, which he set before us by his Ebed's Danavis. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy Torah, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us in the oath written in the Torah of Moshe, the Ebed of El, because we have sinned against you, Yah, and you have confirmed your words 
that you spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil for under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the Torah of Moshe, all this evil has come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before Yah El that we might turn from our iniquities and understand Yah's truth. Therefore have Yah watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For Yah El is lawful in all his works which he do, for we obeyed not his voice. And now, O Yah El, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Mitzrayim with a mighty hand and has gotten thee renowned as at this day. We have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Yah, according to all thy lawfulness, we beseech thee. Let thy anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our others, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, O our El Shema, the prayer we thy ebeds and these supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for your sake. O our El, incline thy ear and Shema, open thy eyes and behold our desolations in the city which is called by thy name, for we do not present our supplications before thee for our lawfulnesses, but for thy great mercy. O Yah, Shema, O Yah, forgive, O Yah, hearken and do, defer not for thy own sake, O our El, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. We ask, Father Yah, for your mercy and grace, Father, as we're reminded of the words of the Ebed's prayer in Psalm 143, that says, Shema, prayer, O Yah, give ear to our supplications, and thy faithfulness answer us, and in thy lawfulness. Enter not in the judgment with we by ebeds, for in thy sight shall no man live and be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted our souls, it has smitten our lives down to the ground, it has made us a dwell in darkness, it's those that have been long dead. Therefore, as our walk overwhelmed within us, our hearts within us is desolate. We remember the days of old, we meditate on all thy words, we muse on the work of thy hands. We stretch forth our hands unto thee, our soul thirsts after thee, as a thirsty land, Selah. Shema speedily, O Yah, Ruach's fail. Hide not thy face from us, lest we be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause us to Shema thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do we trust. Cause us to know the way wherein we should walk, for we lift up our souls unto thee. Deliver us, O Yah, from our enemies. We flee unto thee to hide us. Teach us to do thy will, for thou art our El, thy Ruach is good. Lead us into the land of uprightness. Quicken us, O Yah, for thy name's sake. For thy lawfulness sake, bring our souls out of trouble. And of thy mercy, cut off our enemies and destroy all them that afflict our souls. For we are thy ebeds. Father Yah, we ask for your mercy as we are reminded also of the words of the psalmist in Psalm 88. He spoke, O Yah, Elamah Yeshua, we have cried day and night before thee. Let our prayer come before thee and climb thy ear to our cry. For our souls is full of troubles and our lives draw nigh unto the grave. We are counted with them that go down into the pit. We are as a man that have no strength. Free among the dead like the slain that lie in the grave whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid us in the lowest pit, in darkness, in the deeps. Thy wrath lies hard upon us, and thou hast afflicted us with all thy ways, Selah. Thou hast put away our acquaintance far from us. Thou hast made us an abomination unto them. We are shut up, and we cannot come forth. Our eyes mourn by reason of affliction, Yah, we have called daily upon thee. We have stretched out our hands unto thee. Will thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee, Selah? Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark and thy lawfulness in the land of forgetfulness? But unto thee have we cried, O Yah, and in the morning 
shall our prayer prevent thee. Yah, why cast thou off our souls? Why hides thou thy face from us? We are afflicted and ready to die from our youth up. While we suffer thy terrors, we are distracted. Thy fierce wrath goes over us. Thy terrors have cut us off. They came round about us daily like water. They compass us about together. Lover and friend has thou put far from us and our acquaintance into darkness. We ask, Father Yah, that as we invite you in the midst of this day, this exhortation, that you will transform me and my Isha into instruments of thy will and thy purpose. We ask, Father Yah, that you will prepare the hearts and minds, Father Yah, that will join us, Father Yah. And we ask, Father, that as seed is planted and watered, Father, that you would give the increase, Father, and allow those who need to repent, mean and turn, Father, from whatever way, Father, they're going contrary to your word, allow them to do so. We ask for your will to be done this day, Father Yah. We ask that you would empower me and my Isha to be able to speak a word in season to those who are mourning and those who are bereaved. We ask that you will empower we your ebeds, Father Yah, to continue, Father, to be a blessing unto the widower, the widows, the fatherless, the oppressed and poor. We ask this in Yeshua HaMashiach name we pray. Hallelujah. I praise and thank the Most High because it's definitely been an interesting week. It's definitely been... A lot of things going on during the course of this weekend. We understand that many have followed the so-called synagogue of Satan and it's their Passover. If you read clearly in scripture, the Most High tells you in Exodus chapter 12 when his Passover is. We got to be mindful who we following out here, people, because people are led, many are led by the synagogue of Satan. Now, I'm not one to dispute and argue with anybody about how they keep or when they keep the feast days. I just remember Proverbs chapter three that tells us, envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. And many in Israel say that those who occupy the land of Ibri, the land of uh, uh, Israel, are the synagogue of Satan. So my thing is this, why aren't you studying for yourself? Why aren't you getting into the scriptures trying to find out for yourself and not letting your leader lead you down a path of nothingness for his namesake and not the most high namesake. That's the problem. We as a people got to continue to hold fast to what it is written in the word called scriptures. Many times a lot of people can't discern the word of the most high from the word of David or the word of the most high from the word of Moshe. It's very easy to discern. When the Most High is speaking, Scripture will tell you quit. And the Most High said unto so-and-so. So if the Most High tell you, you know, what he told you in Exodus chapter 20, I don't understand what the problem is with people following the word of the Most High. It's a very big difference into following and following an exalted man and his ego Versus following what's plainly written in the word. And it goes the same thing about our present day topic. That we only been on for the past five, six weeks. And that's that money. Right? A lot of people are caught up listening to man tell them. Give me your money. Give me your money. Give me your money. That's all he wants. Anybody that truly has a relationship with the Most High and read his word got a different outlook and a different take on that money game.
the money drop is is definitely something that you got to ask yourself about because our next segment after we finish up let's revisit money we're going to revisit tithes and we're going to revisit offering all right and i hope and pray this will allow many of you all to be able to uh 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 discern who's trying to shake you down for money and, and who's really of the most high. Many of you all are following Harlan's. See, the Harlan, once you come to us and try to bring all the pagan garbage and bring all the churchianity with you to us, and, and we tell you, nah, that can't be, and you walk away talking about, well, I ain't got worship with them, and then you bring that man... Then you bring that mess to the highland. The highland will be like, oh, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, we know all about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you bring your 10% tithe money? That's the highland. All right? Anytime you are putting money into something on a weekly basis called tithe, it's going against scripture. Tithes was collected every three years. Now, how many of you all still want to call me and my Isha brother and sister? See, a lot of people are a little off-ended and a little upset, a little angry, because when the Ruach start moving and start spilling out and putting out uh, uh, those edits of the word and showing that, you know, you need to be quiet and you need to quiet your spirit. Then all of a sudden, me and my Isha ain't no longer a brother or sister to you. We something else. That's why we don't get caught up in the praise of man. All right. That's why it's very important that you live your life seeking the praise of the creator in whom we have to do versus the praise of man. There are a lot of people running around here today uh, uh, hollering about a lot of things about man and man and their accolades. But the first time the Ruach come over that, that man and uh, 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 start talking to you about you and your shenanigans, then all of a sudden those accolades go out the window. <laughs> and many wonder why that they're bald and afflicted. Many need to quiet themselves, their ruachs and spirits, and begin to seek repentance from the Most High. Many have violated the words of his sanctioned events that give his word. <laughs> And then wonder why things are happening the way they are happening. Repent. We all got to. And I don't sit here before anybody as if I'm sinless or sin free. Nah. Uh-uh. Believe me, the Most High knows me. He know. I love the dog more than you know. But I'm not crossing nobody with this to get the money. That's the difference. I'm not using this to get filthy lucre. To make a gain off of you or turn you into merchandise. That ain't my thing. I fear the most high. He know my heart. And he know I read his word. He said he prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemies. So I'm going to go out there. And figure out a way to get the money up off the enemy. <laughs> but we all got our own struggles and fights. But we as a people got to remember to keep our eyes, our hearts, our minds focused on the most high whom we have to do. We got to cut today into two parts. We got 18 drops. But we in the back of the book and a lot of these chapters got 70 and 60 and 40 and 50 verses. <laughs> Let's get into it. 
Our first stop today is in Matthew chapter 17. It is written, And after six days, Yeshua HaMashiach takes Cephas, Yaakov, and Yohanan, his ox, and bring them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto him Moshe and Eliah talking with him. Then answered Kepha and said unto Yeshua HaMashiach, Master, it is, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moshe, and one for Eliah. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which says, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, Shema ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. And Yeshua HaMashiach came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Yeshua HaMashiach only. And as they came down from the mountain, Yeshua HaMashiach charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Eliah must come first? And Yeshua HaMashiach answered and said unto them, Eliah truly shall come first and restore all things. But I say unto you that Eliah is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of Johannes the Immerser. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Master, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he fall into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples that they could not cure him. Then Yeshua HaMashiach answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him here to me. And Yeshua HaMashiach rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Yeshua HaMashiach apart and said, why could not we cast him out? And Yeshua HaMashiach said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for truly I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goes not out, but by prayer and fasting. And while they abode in Galilee, Yeshua HaMashiach said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And the third day he shall be raised again, and they were exceeding sorry. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Cephas and said, Do not your master pay tribute? He says, Yes. And when he was coming to the house, Yeshua prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? Cephas said unto him, Of strangers. Yeshua HaMashiach says unto him, Then are the children free? Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea, and cast in a hook, and take up the fish that first comes up, 
And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. Take that and give unto them for me and thee. Hallelujah. I'm smiling about this because this is something. Before we get into the money drop, let's go back to verse 21. If you are using a NIV book, a NIV Bible, this verse ain't in your Bible, okay? This says, how be it this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting. Listen, back up in verse 20. When the disciples asked them in 19 uh, why we couldn't cast them out, Verse 20 shows that these words are in red and Messiah is telling the people because of your unbelief. A lot of times we as Israel, we forget that Messiah has told us in the back of this book, your faith has made you whole. You want to sit and trust the doctors? Oh, so-and-so can't uh, do this because of this. Uh, I can't do this uh, because of I'm taking care of so-and-so because they are sick. My question has always been, will thou be made whole? But it's up to your faith that's going to make you whole. Not the faith in eBay. That's why here over in this branch of Zion, we teach people to draw the water, that's water in this cup, for themselves. When the people draw the water for themselves, they get to be in charge of their own relationship with the Most High. But does that mean that they forsake the assembling, the gathering together? Y'all forbid. They don't forsake that. They're not supposed to. There are many that come through where we're blessed to operate in this branch of Zion and, you know, they learn a thing or two and they figure they got all the secrets and keys to the kingdom. All right, well, go ahead. Because we notice once they learn a little something, something, they start dwindling off. Well, go ahead and have at it. Or you got some, when they learn a little something, they'll begin to ostracize the leadership. I ain't taking not one ass from none of y'all and not one piece of money. All right? That's how plain it is. We got to figure out who we going to believe. Many believe the report of the doctor and they settle and fall for it. Don't get me wrong. Doctors do possess a uh, uh, a tremendous amount of wisdom on healing the body. The Most High has given a lot of wisdom and technology to man to be able to heal the body. At the end of the day, we got to remember that it comes down to the Most High's will for that life. As we look at Matthew 17, 21, very important verse. How be it this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting. When you fast that pleases the Most High as stated in Isaiah chapter 58, then you as a person will be able to tap in and unleash the power of the Most High in your life. But you got to have prayer and fasting. This is why the NIV and some of the newer translated Bibles don't have Matthew 17, 21. A lot of people literally uh, uh, don't even catch that the numbering go from verse 20, verse 19, verse 20 to verse 22. Very important that you become familiar with your tool, the sword of the spirit, which is his word. Verse 24 in Matthew 17 talks about when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Kepha and said, do not your master pay tribute. Listen, this word money 
in this Greek, the scriptural Greek, is the scriptural Greek word stater, S-T-A-T-E-R, entry number 4715, and it means a standard of value coin piece of money. So in this instance, money is still money, all right? The reason why we keep going through this, because when we get the tithes and offerings, you ain't going to see nothing much of money. You might have some uh, 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 trespass money or something like that that we've been through. But when it comes down to money itself being given in a place of worship, it's called the free will offering. And if your leadership is begging alms of the people, you need to tell the leadership, go get a job. Seriously. Because only beggars ask alms. All right? Go down to verse 27. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea, cast the hook, take up the fish that first comes up, and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money, that take and give unto them for me and thee. Now, I heard, you know, the psycho babblings of men. Some men say that this was only a, a allegory for him to go find somebody, talk to them, and they'll give you a donation. <laughs> Maisha just said they don't say that. Nah, I don't say that. They say, go put a hook, cast the hook, and take up the fish that first comes up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. Listen, whatever see this was, uh, something came up as a, a, a custom or something. It was pagan, though, that people would make a wish. And throw the money into the, to the sea. Just like you got the fountain at the mall with all the coins in it. This that same thing. And a fish down there eat anything shiny. They'll go after anything. You can pretty much put a, 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 a lug. A lug nut. A little, a little nut on a, a fish hook. Throw it out in the water and just drag it. Just drag it back in. It will it'll attack. It will uh, 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 affect something and catch somebody's attention under that water. So all this fish did was swallow some money that was thrown in there and couldn't swallow. Same way they find them alligators down in, uh, uh, what is that, Florida and in uh, later parts of Alabama and uh, uh, even in Georgia. Well, even in South Carolina, they find alligators. Some of them alligators got license plates in their bellies, got half a, a sneaker in their bellies, all kinds of stuff, all right? But this word money here is the same thing, all right? Stater, value, uh, a standard of value coin piece of money. Very important that you understand that here, money is money, all right? Let's go to our next drop. Our next drop is Matthew chapter 21. We got uh, 46 verses here. All right. It is written. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then, she, then sent Yeshua HaMashiach to disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied, a coat with her, loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say or unto you, ye shall say, The master have need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Navi, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, thy king comes unto thee, Meek and sitting upon an ass, a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Yeshua HaMashiach commanded them, and bought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. 
and a very great multitude spread their garments in the wet. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the wet. And the multitudes that went before and that followed crying, saying, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David, Baruch Abah, he that comes in the name of Yah, Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? <laughs> and the multitude said, This is Yeshua HaMashiach, the Navi of Nazareth of Galilee. And Yeshua HaMashiach went into the temple of Elohim and cast out all them that sold and brought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief of Cohen's and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased and said to him, Hearest thou what ye say? And Yeshua HaMashiach say unto them, Yea, have ye never read? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise? <laughs> And he left them and went out of the city into Bethany, and he lodged there. Now in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Yeshua HaMashiach answered and said unto them, Truly I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in, my, in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. And when he was coming to the temple, the chief Cohen and the Zacchaean of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority dost thou these things, and who gave thee this authority? And Yeshua HaMashiach answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if ye tell me, I and likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The immersion of Yohanan, whence was it, from heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not then believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold Yohanan as a Navi. And they answered Yeshua HaMashiach and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not, but afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, likewise, and he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whither of them twain did the will of his Abba? They say unto him the first, Yeshua HaMashiach saith unto them, Truly I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of Elohim, before you. For Yohanan came unto you in the way of lawfulness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. Hear another parable. 
There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out the husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his ebeds to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his ebeds and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other ebeds more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, and cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. When the master thereof of the vineyard comes, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Yeshua HaMashiach said unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner. This is Yah's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of Yah shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And when the chief Cohen and Pharisees had heard this parable, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a Navi. Hallelujah. Young warriors and leaders, be extremely careful. All right? Be extremely careful because there are a lot of things going on in people's minds, hearts around you that you administer the word of the Most High to. And a lot of people do not, do not, Take the word of the Most High serious, serious. And as we just uh, 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 read about um, from verse 33, a householder who had a, a, a vineyard. Think of the Most High being a householder, a householder in the earth being his vineyard. All right. He done sent Moshe and everybody else in. Look how many prophets and Navis that and Ebed's that the people of Israel then and the people of Israel now still stoning and kill. They don't want to hear nothing. They'll try to assassinate your character, kill, try to kill your reputation, try to kill your relationship with the Most High, all because they want to remain in their wicked way. All right? Verse 30, uh, 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 7 Seven said, 37 says, But last of all, he sent unto to them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. The son was around in the beginning in the days of Torah. If salvation in the back of the book is salvation, and salvation in the front of the book is salvation, well, in the front of the book, salvation has a name other than in English being salvation. Salvation has the name in the front of the book in Torah four times, Yeshua. There are many of Israel to not only in uh, Torah only that don't believe in Messiah. There's nothing wrong with being Torah and Tanakh only. But you gotta have that Messiah because now today some people since they saying that they're Torah only and they want to follow the Ashkenazi uh, 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 Jews, the synagogue of Satan that many Israel call them, but they want to keep their Passover. All right? Very important that we as the people of the Most High understand that Yeshua was there in the beginning in the same way that 
They put Jeremiah, Jeremiah down in a well. The same way that they were uh, uh, bucking against the kings of Israel. The only two kings to me that wasn't really bucked against was David when it came to worshiping the king baby Josiah. It's very important that we be mindful of what we're saying and what we're doing. Josiah cleaned the house. Josiah cleaned the land, cleansed the land. They some called it the first ethnic cleansing. Yeah. The, the ethnicity had to be a commandment keeper. That's how they had to. That's what your ethnicity had to be in the days of this Josiah. He cleansed the land of all the paganism, all the Baal worshippers, all of those who uh, uh, want to envy their uh, 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 persecutors, want to envy all of those who uh, uh, treat them bad and, and all of those who treat them wrong. They want to envy. He cleansed the land of, of those, all those oppressors. Scripture told us, envy not thou the oppressor and choose none of their ways. But many of Israel still choosing the ways of the oppressor and still condemning others. Now, if you choose the way of the oppressor, you know, and go ahead and do what you want to do, how you want to do it with whatever it is you're doing, that's one thing. But don't try to drag nobody with you. Because then you show up being Satan. All right? You show up being Satan. And remember when he was departed from the heavens, he took a third of the angels with him from the Most High. So who are you, leader? When that foul spirit want to rise up against you and want to talk all this stuff, put them out. Those who you keep admonishing about, you know, you we don't praise those names here, sister. We don't praise those names there. Here, brother, put them out. Get their blood off your hands. All right? Then many of them come to the back of the book. And get caught up in Matthew 21, 21. That says, Yeshua HaMashiach answered and said unto them, Truly I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done at a fig tree, but also if ye say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. 22 gets into it a little deeper. And all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Some of you all take these words plainly at face value. But you don't, you don't remember what we just read coming into this session. In Proverbs 28 verse 9, it says, He that turns away his ear from hearing Torah, even his prayer shall be abomination. So how is the word made flesh able to tell people that you don't need Torah? The word made flesh didn't say that. Many uh, uh, so-called believers in this day and time on the first day and the seventh day are listening to those lying pastors Telling you we're not under the law. And if you try to do any port, part of the law, you shall offend at all points. But they still get the tithe, which was instituted under the law. But I'm the bad guy. <laughs> I'm the bad guy. huh? Some of you all got leaders today on this seventh day. Telling you to give your tithe. We addressed this a few weeks ago. Somebody says, well, on uh, eBay, them people we I worship at, worship that is crazy. You know, I've been watching this uh, series you doing on money and, you know, they asked me to, uh, uh, told me that if I wanted to attend Passover, you know, uh, it would be $60. 
So I asked the person, what's it $60 for? Oh, it's to help with a, a, a building, but I ain't give it to him. <laughs> Look, <laughs> you expect the leadership to pull money out of their pocket. Some of you all places of worship are big. Some of you all house anywhere from 500 to 15,000 people. And you expect the leadership to pull it out of their pocket? No, that's one of those costs that come along that if you wanted to participate in tabernacles, a venue, all they do is divide up the money amongst everybody going and it's the price. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. My thing is this, make sure they keep in the most high Passover and not their home. That's my whole thing, all right? But whatever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Now, this is the part of the book that many, many love to come from the back of the book. But the lion first day pastor and most of some of them on the seventh day lion. They don't tell you about Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9 that talks about. He who turns away his ear from hearing Torah, his prayer shall be abomination. Now, if you turn your ear from hearing Torah, how can Matthew 21 verse 22 be applied to you? It can't. Messiah only preached the Torah and the prophets. <coughs> Kepha. When he got his head on right, Kepha, Peter, when he got his mind right, all he preached was Torah and the prophets. The apostle Shaul, all he preached was Torah and the prophets. It's very important that many of us as believers understand that rude awakening. Revelation 12, 17, Revelation 14, 12, Revelation 22, verses 14, 15. That rude awakening is going to catch a lot of you all, and a lot of you all are going to be found liars on Messiah because a lot of you all are lying on Messiah. You lied on Paul, you lied on Moshe, but Messiah said, we had two accusers of the brethren. One of them, Satan, the wicked one, and the other one is Moshe. So what are you saying? What are you doing? If the Torah tells us that you got to keep this and do this throughout your generations, don't that mean throughout your generations? And geography ain't a factor. Because when Passover was instituted, go back to uh, Exodus chapter 12, when these things was instituted, the holy days and all of that, Israel was not in the land of Jerusalem. They was not in Israel at that time. They were in the wilderness. So then now you got people in this day and time trying to argue and debate back and forth. Nah, this ain't going to work, people. We got to figure out what we say and what we doing. All right? Matthew 21, 12. Yeshua HaMashiach went into the temple of Yah and cast out all of them that sold and brought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Listen, leaders and young warriors, I know they sound good. You woke up into a place of worship and you kick over and start zapping out. They're going to lock your ass up. All right? That's simple. <laughs> They're going to lock you up. And just let just, just know that Brother e -Ben said, make sure you got bail, bail money for when you uh, uh, do Matthew 21, verse 12. All right? Make sure you got bail money. I tell people a lot of, all the time, you know, 
uh, 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 people come to me, I need strength right now because these people bother me and all that. Nah, I'm not praying for you to have strength. I'm going to pray for you to have peace. Why ain't you going to pray for me to have strength, they said. Along with great strength comes great bail money. Remember that, all right? <laughs> Sometimes you don't need strength because strength is going to have you getting booked, <laughs> dragged out somewhere, all right? This word money changing. The word money, ah, oh man, kolu, kolubistis is a coin dealer. That's all it is. Kolubistis is a, a coin dealer. Very important, all right? A lot of you are going to need a lot of coins if you continue to pray for strength. Let's check this out, though, people. We got to be extremely mindful, okay? Mindful, all right? A lot of people is going to try you. A lot of people is going to test your patience, especially people on social media. You got a group of uh, 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 pretty, pretty men sitting back in a corner, you know, getting their fingernails done and all of this and, and their facials talking stuff to you. Yo, look, check this out, homie. <laughs> Leave me alone, all right? I'm at a season in my life where I ain't got no cases. Leave me alone, all right? <laughs> it's very important, people, that you be mindful, that you... Uh, that you know at all times who you belong to, okay? See, the stone that the builders rejected. You got a lot of Torah only, no Messiah. A lot of Tanakh only, no Messiah. You got Torah, Tanakh, uh, 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 and Apocrypha only, no Messiah, all right? Those are the ones who rejected the stone. Those are the ones that need a goat or a lamb today without blemish, they're sacrificing the lamb because they don't believe in the work that Messiah did. Now, if you're rehearsing the righteous act by grilling your lamb and putting, uh, uh, writing a word, this is the Hebrew, scriptural Hebrew word for uh, blood and you putting it on your doorpost right here, D-A-M, that's how I look. You putting it on the doorposts and all of that. You rehearsing righteous acts. That's one thing. All right. But when you start talking about that, uh, uh, I need blood. That's a whole nother demographic right there. Then Messiah's blood ain't no good for you. Keep telling everybody in the back of that King James Bible, read that book, Ibri, the book of Hebrews. That'll give a lot of Torah only to not only apocrypha only people uh, uh, some more insight, whereas you'll understand those who come in the volume of the book, yeah, where they coming from. See, this stone that the builders rejected, the same as the head of the corner, verse 42, this is Yah's doing it, it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of Yah shall be taken from you, and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to power. Listen, if we go on to show no serve, let's serve. If not, get out the way. All right? Because it ain't no in between uh, uh, place dealing with the things we supposed to be dealing with. Our next stop today, Matthew chapter 22. We go on 1 through 46. And Yeshua HaMashiach answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, sent for his ebates to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other ebates, saying, Tell them which are Bidding, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready, come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his ebeds and entered them spitefully, 
and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Then said he to his ebates, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So those ebates went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how canst thou in here not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the Ebeds, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Then the Pharisees, then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his walk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of Elohim in truth, neither carest thou for thou, thou for any man, for thou regard not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what think thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Yeshua HaMashiach perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought it unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Who is this image and superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar those things which are Caesar's, and unto Yah those things which are Yah's. And when they had heard these words, they marveled and left them and went their way. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which said that there is no resurrection, and asked them, saying, Master, Moshe said, if a man die having no children, his ox shall marry his Isha and raise up seed unto his ox. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first when he had married a wife, he deceased having no issue, left his Isha with his ox. And likewise the second, also in the third and to the seventh, and last of all the woman died also. Wherefore in the resurrection, whose Isha shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Yeshua HaMashiach answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of Elohim. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the Maliks of Yah in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by Yah, saying, I am the Elohim of Abraham, and the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Yaqub. Elohim is not the Elohim of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the sad Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked them a question, tempting them, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Yeshua HaMashiach said unto him, Thou shalt love Yah thy El with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and all the navis. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Yeshua HaMashiach asked them, saying, What think ye of Messiah? Whose son is he? They said unto him, The son of David. He said unto them, How then do David and Ruach call him master, saying, Yah said unto my master, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. If David then called him master, 
how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither durst any man from that day forth ask him <laughs> any more questions. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. Hallelujah. Excuse me. <laughs> Look, man. <laughs> y'all want some? Y'all, y'all want to get slick with the mouth? Start studying Yeshua, Yohanan, and uh, 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 the Apostle uh, Shaul. Cause I'm gonna tell you something. He'll say some things in some ways that I have you looking like whoa. And verse 46 is evident. No man was able to ask, answer him a word, neither do any man from that day forth <laughs> ask him any more questions. <laughs> Look, man, it's very important that we understand. And for those who are Torah and Tanakh only, let me throw this out there to you. If you go into Proverbs 30, verse 4, it asks a profane question. And this here was from Psalm, what was that? 110 verse 1, from verse 41 to 46. Listen, the Most High ain't an author of confusement. A lot of you all are in your doctrine, okay? Humble yourself, get rid of this strange doctrine, and ask the Most High to forgive you. Repent, turn from it. You know, especially if you're teaching it, Ask the Most High to have mercy on your soul, all right? But here in verse 19, we got this money. Show me the tribute money, all right? And they bought unto him a penny. Here in his word, uh, money was colobistis, all right? Excuse me. No, it's no misma, excuse me. Entry number 3546, no misma. It means coin money. Still money is money. But we got a lot of things interacting in these scriptures. All right? Very important. Um, let's go back up to verse 30, 29 and 30. Yeshua HaMashiach answered and said unto them, Ye do err. Not knowing the scriptures nor the power of Elohim, for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the Maliks of Elohim in heaven. Israel, stop with that doctrine about, you know, I'm going to see my mother again and I'll know her, she'll know me. No, that ain't happening. The dead knows nothing. All right? Matter of fact, you need to get into uh, Sarat and the Apocrypha and get one of them full Apocryphers because it's a doctrine on death in there that many of you all need to understand. Very important, all right? We need to understand here that Messiah, here in verse 15, you know, they was trying to get him and entangle him and what he was saying in his talk, all right? 16, very important characteristic and trait. 16 says, they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodian saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teach the way of Elohim in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regard not the persons of man. A lot of you all got a lot of respect for man and woman on this physical plane of existence. The Elohim in me is not a respecter of persons, all right? Let me say that again for those who don't understand. The Elohim in me is not a respecter of persons. That don't mean I will not be cordial to you. I will be, you know, agreeable to you when it's time to be agreeable. But the Elohim in me is not a respecter of persons. That's scripture. And here is a characteristic that Messiah took from his Abba. All right? Notice that ain't nobody want to come to the wedding. 
And that king had destroyed all them people in verses 1 through 14. Don't feel bad when you keep inviting people to hang out with you and come over. Maybe the most high is separate, keeping you separate from them people. Some of you all might be upset and angry that your family don't talk to you, won't come visit you. Maybe your, the Heavenly Father is keeping that wickedness away from you. Keeping the falsehood. All of us on here should be above the age of accountability. And that's the age of 20. Some say, well, I thought it was 12. I thought it was 13 when they were bar mitzvah. It ain't. Scriptures say 20. All right? Remember, 19 and under went into the promised land with, with Yehoshua. <coughs> 20 and over, all of them from Moshe generation, including Moshe, didn't make it in the promised land. All right? They're just to keep the record straight, all right? Let's keep it moving. Our next drop today, it's another 46 verse drop, is Matthew chapter 25. We'll be reading verses 1 through 46. It is written, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bride, Groom. Five of them were wise, five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. At midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise said, answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Master, Master, open to us. But he answered and said, Truly I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own ebeds and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those he beds comes and reckons with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Master, thou delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His master said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful Ebed. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy master. 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Master, thou delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His master said unto him, Well done, good and faithful Ebed. Thou hast been faithful over few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Enter thou into the joy of thy master. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Master, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not straw. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast 
that is thine. His master answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful Ebed, thou knowest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou ought to therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which have ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that have not shall be taken away even that which he has. And cast ye the unprofitable ebed into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. <clears throat> when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy malics with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, and but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my Abba, and heard the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the lawful answer him, saying, Master, when saw we then a hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Truly I say unto you, and as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my ox, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his malice. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me no meat, I was thirsty. Ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in, and ye clothed me not, sick and in prison, and ye visited me. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Master, when saw we thee a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Truly I say unto you, and as much as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the lawful into eternal life. Hallelujah. Man, we got some stories going on. Let's go back to the top. All right. 1 through 13, learn the lesson of the five wives. You don't have to get stingy with some stuff. If you set apart a certain time in your day for the most high, don't let nobody interrupt that. Okay? No matter who they claim to be in their shenanigans. Okay? If you set apart uh, 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 ways and, and, and days in your life for the most high, you, will, you can't let nobody... Uh, 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 you can't let nobody uh, disturb that. Some of you all are the homeowner, the head of household. But you keep Sabbath, you and your spouse, but you got children that don't keep Sabbath that are at work on the Sabbath day and doing all kinds of things. Well, you're being held accountable for their mess, okay? Because it happened in your land. Your home is your land right now. It happened on, the, on your watch. Since you want to be the, you know, the watchman of the home and all of that, it happens on your watch. You got people running in and out of the, to the store during the Sabbath day. Don't be party to them in their mess. I'm going to tell you, um, it's very important that you understand this. Uh, in the front of the book, I think it was Ezra. Somebody was sitting by the gate doing something on the Sabbath day. 
Ezra had to tell him flat out, look, don't let me come out here next Sabbath and you out here because I'm going to lay my hands on you. All right? <laughs> Ezra had to tell him that plain. All right? You're going to have to get selfish. Make your stand. If you're a child of the Most High and you had a household and you got grown folk living in your house, well, they need to get their own house. Since they know it all and so wise, I don't play with grown folk, especially uh, uh, children that think they grown, and especially these adults. A lot of adults try to bring that same mess from churchianity into a set-apart space, in a set-apart place, all right? Listen, some of you all are going to be judged the same way that we just read here in uh, uh, verses uh, 14 all the way to, to the end, all right? Well, 14 to, uh, let's see. Twenty-nine, fourteen 14 to 30. These 16 verses very important. All right. Some of you all, all of us got at least one gift, one talent in us that the most highest place in us. It's very important that we understand that you got to use it to the most highest glory. Don't keep your one gift, your one talent to yourself. Don't bury it within yourself. And your one gift and your one talent ain't you uh, 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 calling yourself correcting people. No, correct yourself. <laughs> Take a look at verse 18, money. But he that received one went and digged it in the earth and hid his master's money. Very important. This word money here is Argurian, A-R-G-U-R-I-O-N, entry number 694, and it means cash money. Very important that we understand this. Money is still money. All right? Some of you all are going to lose, all right? Some of you all are going to lose big time. Listen to 29 for every... Unto everyone that hath shall be give, given, and he shall have abundance, but from him that have not shall be taken away, even that which he has. And notice here that in this uh, uh, parable, the word is eBay. Even the Most High is going to say, well done, my good and faithful eBay. Or depart from me, you wicked eBay, for I know you not. Very important that we understand that, all right? Somebody need to take time out somewhere along the line, figure out what it is the Most High has gifted you with, and you better start using it to its glory or you will lose it. You wasted all that time singing for Baal and the choir's anniversary and getting your robe and your white and practicing how to do the cabbage patch down the aisle of the church coming in. You better find your gift, talent, and ability quick and leave them name, them pagan names over there too where they belong because the Most High is not going to be mocked, all right? You want to blaspheme the Holy Spirit against the Ruach? You want to know what that is? Do, do, do not do what the Most High has placed into you for you to do for him. You'll see what blaspheming the Ruach is, all right? Our next stop, Matthew 28. We're going from 1 through 20, whole chapter. In the end of the Shabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Miriam. Magdalene and other Miriam to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, 
For the Malik of Yah descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, his raiment white as snow, and for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the Malik answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Yeshua HaMashiach, which was impaled. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said, Come see the place where Messiah left. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. He goes before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre. With fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Yeshua HaMashiach met them saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Yeshua HaMashiach unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my ox that they shall go into Galilee and there they shall see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief Cohen all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the Zacane and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while he slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. <laughs> and this saying is commonly reported among the Yahudim unto this day. <laughs> then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Yeshua HaMashiach had appointed them, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubt. And Yeshua HaMashiach came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teaching all nations, immersing them in the name of Yah, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, y'all. This is a very funny story. All right. First verse 15. All right. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Yahudin unto this day. Some are still reporting lies. Some are doing as they were taught, not what they experienced through research, all right? Some are doing what they were taught. A lot of the mess that I learned with over 20 years in this thing of ours, a lot of the mess I learned throughout the years, I had to unlearn. Many of you all are trying to debate with people. You are one verse wonders, a lot of you all. A lot of you all are trying to debate with people that read whole chapters as you see we do. You trying to take your one little verse and hold a long drawn out debate based upon one verse. Can't do it. You want to have two different Understandings to different mentalities. I like this chapter. All right. I like this chapter. Because here in this chapter, a lot of people like to shut down the Isha. And that word Isha is scriptural Hebrew for the English word woman slash wife. Here, the first C 
sermon or the first exhortation of the Messiah's being risen is given to by Malik first and then Messiah, two witnesses, all right, was given to women. The Malik said, verse 7, go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and behold, he goes before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. All right. The Malik is telling Miriam of Magdalene. It's another woman in the scriptures that's being lied on left and right. I remember this one because I had taught this on the very Sabbath that I met my Isha in 2017. It came up the following, the previous week where I was worshiping. Uh, a group of women asked the uh, uh, leadership, tell us about Mary Magdalene. Why y'all keep looking at us like we hurt and all it is. So they say, Ebed, Ebed Darby, your assignment for next Shabbat, y'all willing? You want to bring it on Miriam of Magdalene. Okay. For those who <laughs> didn't know me then, but just getting to know me, you know what I did. I pulled out that lexicon and looked for everywhere her name was mentioned. Magdala, Magdalene, Mary, Miriam, everything. Only thing the scripture said that was uh, uh, iffy about her was she was the one in which Messiah cast out seven spirits, foul spirits. But as far as her being a hard lot, a famous prostitute and all of that, <laughs> that churchianity, y'all better repent. Y'all better repent. Nah, it ain't in these scriptures. Not in the back of this book. Maybe somebody got, uh, you know, the the glad tidings of Thomas or something, and he wrote something about her or something. Or, or the doctrine of, uh, of Luke, you know, maybe he wrote about her. But in this canon called the Holy Bible, nah. <laughs> Ain't nothing foul about her other than the Messiah cast out seven spirits. <coughs> Some even contend... The wedding of Canaan was his marriage to her. That Messiah married her. Some contend she uh, uh, had his baby. They were sleeping together. Look, let's stick with scripture. All right. Verse 12 talks about money. And when they were assembled with the Zacchaean and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers. This word money, in verse uh, 12 and verse 15, is entry number 694, Argurian, which means money. All right? People paid for these people to lie. Think about it in this day and time. 15 says they still, um, so they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Yahudim to this day. Think about how many people are paid to lie on you. How many people started out saying that, you know, yo, this my brother, this my sister. And then when the Ruach, you really get to working in there working on them and pointing out their mess, then all of a sudden, you know, you're a liar and you you fake and you phony and you this and you that. Look, man, can't have it both ways, all right? One minute you're glad to learn these things are the most high. See, the things that are, are the ways 
that go on in the house of the Most High are not the same as the ways of the harlot house that many of us came up out of. All right? The harlot house got their ways and sayings and doings and things, and the Most High got his. Look, we all got to remember who we are and who we belong to. All right? Let's keep it moving. Our next stop is Mark. And we're going to be Mark 6. We're going from 1 through 56. <laughs> it is written. And Yeshua HaMashiach went out from thence and came into his own country and his disciples followed him. And when the Shabbat day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying from whence have this man these things. And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Miriam, the brother of Yaqub and Yosis and of Yehuda and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Yeshua HaMashiach said unto them, a Navi is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he had laid his hand upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean ruachs and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only, no script, no bread, no money in their purse, but be shod with sandals and not put on two coats. And he said unto them, and what place soever ye enter in in a house, there abide until ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear you, when ye depart, thence shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Truly I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And they went out and preached that men should repent and they cast out many devils and were anointed with oil, many that were sick and healed them. And King Herod heard of him, for his name was spread abroad. And he said that Johanan the Immerser was risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Others said that it is Eliah, and others said that it is a Navi, or as one of the Navis. But when Herod heard thereof, he said, It is Johanan whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon Johanan and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his ox Philip's Isha, for he had married her. For Johanan had said unto thee, Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy ox Isha. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against them and would have killed them, but she could not. For Herod feared Johanan, knowing that he was a just man, and set apart and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. And when a convenient day was come, that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his masters, high captains, chief of states of Galilee. And when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod, and them that sat with him, the king said to the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it. And he swore unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee unto the half of my kingdom. And she went forth and said unto her armor, 
What shall I ask? And she said, the head of Yohanan the Immerser. And she came in straightway with hasten to the king and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger the head of Yohanan the Immerser. And the king was exceeding sorry, sorry yet for his oath's sake, and for their sakes which sat with him, he would not reject her. And immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought, and he went and beheaded him in the prison, and brought his head in a charger, and gave it to the damsel, and the damsel gave it to her aunt. And when his disciples heard of it, they came and took up his corpse, and laid it in a tomb. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Yeshua HaMashiach, and told him all things both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while, for there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot there out of all cities, and out went them and came together unto him. And Yeshua HaMashiach, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, this is a desert place and now the time is far past. Send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. He answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread and give them to eat? And he says unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they say five and two fishes. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and break the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes, and they that did eat of the loaves were about five thousand men. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida, while he went away, sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when he even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he come unto them walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a ruach and cried out, for they all saw him in immediate and were troubled, and immediately he talked with them and said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure, and wondered, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart were hardened. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Gennesaret and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him and ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the street and besought him that they might touch, if it were, but the border of his garment, and as many as touched them 
were made whole. Hallelujah. Listen. This is an interesting story. We got a couple things going on here. All right. Go back to 35 to like maybe 40, uh, 35 to 44. 35 to 44. The story of the feeding of the people. All right. Um, this is about the closest time you will see Messiah taking up a, a offering, <laughs> a collection. And again, this collection was of food. All right. Listen, a lot of you all are getting bamboozled and hoodwinked and pent out of a lot of people's doctrines. People are making up stuff trying to say it's of scripture and it is not of the most high. Very important that we be reminded of this. Here, uh, the not in this particular story, but in other accounts, I think in Mark, Luke, and John, where it's repeated again, uh, he sent them out to gather what food they, they can find. Uh, Again, the only collection Messiah ever took up was of food. And this is the only collection he ever took up. All right? Here in verse 47. I like 47 because you can look at this two ways. 47 says, When even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. Messiah was on land. Don't forget that. 48. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he comes unto them walking upon the sea and would have passed by them. Listen, they left Messiah back here. They out there rowing. And he comes walking up on them on the sick. Uh, one individual tried to make it seem like uh, in this account that Messiah went before them to prepare the way and was walking back toward them. No. <laughs> they out in the sea rowing and left Messiah back there. So Messiah is walking up, you know, and would have passed them. Very important that we as a people understand that if it ain't written, it ain't so. There are a lot of people that are going to try to inject their mindsets, their mindsets and new concepts into your thinking. And by them having that little half verse doctrine and they talking 20 minutes about it. Nah, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. This is why a lot of Israel don't believe healing can happen. Nobody is, is, is uh, pushing them to exercise their faith. Some have faith in uh, uh, a couple small things, but when it comes to a big thing, it ain't happening. You know, uh, it's very important that we be reminded of faith. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. Let's go back to verse 8. 7 says, He called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean ruachs. A lot of you all don't have power over unclean ruachs because, A, you have not received the ruach of the Most High, and you have not accepted the Most High's word. You don't believe, so how can you preach a healing that comes supernatural, but yet and still you don't have the belief, all right? Very important that you get some belief. Verse 8 says, And commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only, no script, no bread, no money in their purse. 
Very important that we understand this, that this money here, they were told to go and take nothing with them. Some of you all are going to end up not blessed because you yourself won't be a blessing. All right? You can ponder that. This word money here in verse 8, and I ain't talking about uh, being a blessing with money. Uh-uh. He told them no script, no bread, no money in their purse in verse 8. So I ain't talking about money. A lot of times, a lot of you all don't understand the divine law of the universe. All right? As one soweth, so shall they reap it. <laughs> That's divine law. So if you ain't going to be a blessing, how are you going to be a blessing? And I'm not talking about money. Mm. This word money here in verse 6. He told them not to bring money. It's the scriptural Hebrew word chalkos. C-H-A-L-K-O-S. And it is entry number 5475. And it means money. Still money. All right. 11 says, 10 says, Yeshua HaMashiach said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into a house, thereby till ye depart from that place, and whosoever shall not receive you nor hear you, when ye depart, thence shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Truly I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And that, man, I'm going to tell you something. Sodom and Gomorrah was definitely destroyed. I was watching uh, uh, Ancient Aliens uh, uh, last night, you know. They was hitting me with some schism, boy. I had to get out of here, but... They showed one time on Ancient Aliens the uh, geographical location of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. And there's nothing there <laughs> but heaps of sand. And all because you don't want to be a blessing to the people of Elohim. You want to, believe me, it's going to be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. We as a people got to figure out what we saying, what we doing, who we going to serve, how we living. We got to. It's the only way that we as a people can be uh, uh, sure that we're doing what the Most High will have us do. Let's go to our next drop. Our next drop is uh, Mark 11. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent forth two of his disciples and said unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into, ye shall find a coat tied, whereon never man sat, loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the master have need of him, and straightway he will send him here. And they went their way and found the coat tied by the door without him, and a place where two ways met, and they loosed him. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye loosen the coat? And they said unto them, Even as Yeshua HaMashiach had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the coat to Yeshua HaMashiach and cast their garments on him. And he sat upon him and many spread their garments in the way. And others cut down branches off the trees and strawed them in the way. And they that went before and they that followed cried saying, Hosanna, Baruch is he that come in the name of Yah. Blessed be the kingdom of our Abba Darby that comes in the name of Yah. Hosanna in the highest. 
and Yeshua HaMashiach entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked round about upon all things, now the eventide was come. He went out unto Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry and seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves. He came if he happily he might find anything thereon, and when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of the figs was not yet. And Yeshua HaMashiach answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever, and his disciples heard it. And they come to Jerusalem, and Yeshua HaMashiach went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and of the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house, be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and chief Cohen heard it and saw how they might destroy him, for they feared him because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, he went out of the city, and in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Kephor calling to remembrance unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed, is withered away. And Yeshua HaMashiach answering said unto them, Have faith in Yah. For truly I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall now doubt his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forget, if ye have ought against any, that your Abba also which is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Abba, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. And they came again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, there come to him the chief Cohen, the scribes, the Zacchaeus, and say unto him, But well, what authority do thou these things, and who gave thee this authority to do these things? And Yeshua HaMashiach answered and said unto them, I will also ask of you one question and will and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The immersion of Yohanan, was it from heaven or may? Answer me. And they reasoned with themselves, saying that we shall say from heaven, he will say, why then did ye not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they feared the people, for all men counted Yohane that he was a Navi indeed. And they answered and said unto Yeshua HaMashiach, We cannot tell. And Yeshua HaMashiach answering said unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Hallelujah. Listen. We got one third a prayer being answered. Right here. All right. Verses 24, 25, and 26. All right. One third is believe. Another third is forgiveness. And another third to operate your faith. You got to remember Galatians say faith work by love. All right, so that's the whole of uh, 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 your prayers being answered. All right, 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, whatso things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. 
Listen, you need to think about what you're praying about. Because I desire a chocolate Maserati with peanut butter leather interior with a great jelly purple stripe through the seat. I've been praying for that. Ain't seen it yet. <laughs> so you make sure you're praying within the will of the Most High for what you're praying for. A lot of people don't recognize that about prayer. 25 says, and when ye stand praying, forget if ye have aught against any, that your Abba also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Abba which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. All right? So it's three parts to getting a prayer answer. You got to believe, you got to forgive, and you got to have love to operate the faith. A lot of people ain't telling people this. It's easy for you to say, uh, 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 verse 23, for truly I say unto you that whatsoever shall, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou be removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Shoot, I've been saying these uh, 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 winning Mega Million and Powerball numbers for, for some time now. <laughs> I've been speaking to winning, winner over my life. <laughs> Ain't seen it yet, and I believe. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you some real good stuff, people. But let's go back. We, I, I wanna, um, I wanna uh, uh, go back to something here in this chapter in uh, uh, Mark 11. I want, I want to take a really, really, really take a look at something. I know we're dealing with the word money, um, but something came up. Here in the first 10 verses, leaders and, and young ones and young warriors, all right, beware of those who say, Hosanna, Hosanna, trying to always celebrate your name and all of that, all right, because the same way Messiah had went through the Hosanna, Hosanna, and then everybody was screaming and pale them and pale them, it's going to happen to you, okay? The same way celebrate people celebrate you. Oh, I never heard this, never read this, I didn't know this. Oh, I praise and thank the most high for you. But when the very minute you start correcting them about that paganism and all of that, then all of a sudden it's impale them, impale them. I don't need this mess. I don't need to hear that mess. Shoot, I know more than you. I'm grown in all of this, children and adults. All right, be careful how you receive the congratulations of men. All right, because these are the very same ones that will congratulate you now. By the time the sun go down, they'll be screaming, impale them, impale them, impale them. Some wonder why, um, one person came to me uh, this week in the form of a phone call asking me about prayer and all it is. Look, his Ruach runs that. It's my job to enforce that. Only his name, the Most High's name, get lifted up. But other than that, I ain't got nothing to do with, you know, how things happen and all of that. Some people come to prayer. We used to have this um, before. One dude would join us early in the morning and sit on a prayer call and snore with his phone open. We still got prayer going on, and it goes on on our conference line. Whereas if you uh, uh, need help muting your phone, somebody will help you mute your phone. All right, I don't need to hear the TV in the background. I don't need to hear the conversations with everybody else. I don't need to hear you listening to other people preaching and teaching while you're supposed to be sitting in prayer. You know, it's that simple. 
prayer is why we we got a house of prayer for all people, but it is uh, rules there, laws <laughs> based upon Torah. There will be no pagan deities names coming out of people's mouths. Go back to Exodus 23, 13. You ain't supposed to have them pagan names in your mouth, no how. Then most of you all are posting, stealing pagan lame names. You cut and paste, whole scripture, take time out. You know the creator name? Get them LRDs and them GDs out of there. Them Jesus Christos. Sharing people's stuff with that stuff in it. Don't bring it over here. Please don't bring it over to none of our pages. Because uh, 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 we got a strong block of friend delete game. Well, how can you teach the people? The people already know. Psalm 68 verse 4. The people know so much, they'll tell you. Once they tied a quivering in a closet or hiding under the bed, shaking from their own children that they gave birth to, They'll start talking stuff to you. You'll know that it's time for them to go on. <laughs> People are funny. Let's get here in Matthew, uh, Mark 11. Look at verse 15. Again, young warriors, don't try this at home. Make sure you got bail money. You going up into people places of worship, Call yourself kicking over the table, not even trying to steal the money. But you kick that table over, I'm going to tell you something. We just seen a couple weeks ago, somebody said the wrong thing and, 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 and got smacked upside their head. All right? You go into the wrong place, call yourself kicking over the money table. Them people going to beat you half to death and you still going to get locked up and need a whole bunch of bail money. So make sure you're operating under the unction of the Ruach. All things are lawful, but everything ain't expedient. It ain't expedient for you to run in there and messing with them people. Under whose authority? That's what I would want to know. You come to me talking about you need prayer because you need healing because, you know, you was led to go into a place of worship and kick over their money chain table. Them people are king. Under whose authority sent you? And don't get to telling me you heard some voice in your head. Because the only voice I know, well, when the Most High speaks, let me show you how the Most High speaks. I'm turning to it right now. When the Most High speaks, it says this, Exodus 20, verse 1. And Yah spake all these words, saying, all right, that's how you know the Most High speak. All right, you don't have to worry about hearing no voice in your head. All right, a lot of y'all running around hearing voices in your head. Let me call him and, hey, hey, bye. Uh, 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 the Most High told me, she'll have me carted out of here so fast in a, a, a straight jacket in a mental institution. And she'll probably leave me. Okay, and yes. Uh, 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 Isha can put away her husband and her husband can put away the Isha. All right. Here, Exodus 14, verse 1. And Yah spake unto Moshe, she, saying, Don't tell me nothing about no voices in your head. You need to go sit down and get that mess from churchianity out of you. A lot of you all still carrying, trying to carry that mess from churchianity. One person praying and everybody mumbling something. Shut up! Wonder why, wonder why we on a conference line now where everybody can be muted. Nobody want to hear that mess. Most of y'all, uh, one person invoking the name of Yah, the true and living Elohim of Israel, and all y'all sitting around, rest of y'all sitting around your breath. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Oh, yes, LRD. Oh, yeah. Come on, that's confusement. We as a people got to figure out what we saying and what we doing, who we serving. <laughs> you, love. <laughs> well, hold on, 41. And Yeshua HaMashiach sat over against the treasury, and behold how the people cast, oh, okay, we on, that's 12, we was on 11. 
Let me get back to verse 15. It says, And they came to Jerusalem, and Yeshua went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers in the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Some of you all really, really, really need to look at the place of worship you went. People was in there selling VHS tapes and DVDs of the service right there. And then, you know, I've been to, I've been to a couple of them first day churches. They selling bootleg DVDs in the lobby too. Man, look, y'all got to watch out where y'all worshiping that, man. You know, it's going to be like coming to America part two. Remember when uh, uh, that, that couple went back to uh, uh, Queens to get married and they asked Arsenio Hall, he was playing a preacher. Is this a house of G.O.D.? You know what I mean? <laughs> the shenanigans, man. But here the, uh, uh, the word M-O-N-E-Y is entry number 2855, a coin dealer. It was money changers. It's nothing but a Kalubistis, all right? A money dealer. Mark 11, verse 25. Yeah, very important. We got two more drops, people. Our next drop is Mark 12. And we're going from verse 1 through 44. And Yeshua HaMashiach began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and set a hedge about it and digged a place for the wine fat and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a false country. And at the season, he said to the husbandmen of Ebed that he might receive from the husbandmen of the fruit of the vine of the vineyard. And they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty. And again, he sent unto them another Ebed. And at him, they cast stones and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully him. And again, he sent another. And him they killed and many others, beating some and killing some. Having yet therefore one son, his beloved, he sent him also unto them saying, they will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, this the heir, come let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him and killed him, and cast him out of the vineyard, and what shall therefore the master of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen, and will give the vineyard unto others. And have ye not read this scripture, the stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner? This was Yah's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they sought to lay on him, lay hold on him, but feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. They left him and went their way. But they said unto him, certain of the Pharaoh's seeds and of the Herodians to catch him in his words. And when they were come, they say unto him, Master, we know that thou art true and cares for no man, for thou regards not the person of men, but teaches the way of Elohim and truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Shall we give or shall we not give? But he knowing their hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny that I may see it. And they bought it, and he said unto them, Who is this image and superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. And Yeshua HaMashiach answering said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to Yah the things that are Yah's, and they marveled at him. Things come unto him, the sad you see which say there is no resurrection, and they asked them, saying, Master, Moshe wrote unto us, if a man ox die, and leave him his Isha behind, that leave, and leave no children, that his ox should take his Isha and raise up seed unto his ox. Now there were seven brethren, and the first took an Isha and died and left no seed. 
The second took her and died, left, neither left he any seed, and the third likewise. And the seven had her and left no seed, and last of all, the woman died also. In the resurrection, therefore, when they shall rise, who Isha shall she be of them? For the seven had her to wife. And Yeshua HaMashiach answering said unto them, Do ye not know? Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of Elohim? For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the Malachs which are in heaven. And as touching the dead, that they rise, have ye not read in the book of Moshe how in the bush, Elohim spake unto him, saying, I am the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Yaqub. He is not the Elohim of the dead, but the Elohim of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had asked them well, asked them, which is the first commandment of all. And Yeshua HaMashiach answered him, The first of all commandments is Shema, O Israel, Yah-I-L is a cut. And thou shalt love Yah thy El with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, there is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one Elohim, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, with all the soul, with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself, is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifice. And when Yeshua HaMashiach saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of Yah, and no man after that <laughs> do <laughs> ask him any questioning. And Yeshua HaMashiach answered and said, While he taught in the temple, how say the scribes that Messiah is the son of David? For David himself laid, said by the Ruach HaKadosh, Yah said to my master, sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself called him master, and whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. And he said unto them in his doctrine, Beware the scribes which, which love to go in long clothing and love, love salutations in the marketplace and the chief seats in the synagogues and the uppermost rooms at feasts which devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. These shall receive greater damnation. And, you should, and Yeshua HaMashiach sat over against the treasury, and behold how the people cast money into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples, and said unto them, Truly I say unto you that this poor widow have cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury, for all they cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Hallelujah. Listen. Very important. We as people understand and know that the Most High is not playing with none of us. I want to go back to something right quick because I do want to highlight a very, very pertinent point. Okay? Um, let 
All I want to put, all I want to put out there is I want everybody to understand, recognize, and know where Messiah was when it said that he was in the temple. They were in the temple on the Shabbat day. Something we read earlier uh, talked about it being the Shabbat day. There is no other day, no other day given to no one, okay, other than the Shabbat day. The days were firmly fixed in place in Genesis chapter 1. And the first day was firmly sat in place. So the days are in place in verse 5. All right. So that floating Sabbath thing, uh-uh. The only thing that changed about the Sabbath day is that man put a pagan name on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is the only day with a name in scripture. The most high number, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the seventh day is the Sabbath day. All right. Man made those pagan names. I saw somebody post today, uh, uh, today is Nisan. That's a pagan name. All right. If you're going to say anything, call it Pesach, Passover, and, and, and make sure you understood a beef. Make sure you got the lamb on the tenth day. Make sure you seen the bar. You seen the bar. All right. Make sure uh, 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 you understand the green ears. And for all those on the first day who claim to be reading this book. I read from a King James, all right? This is the most common book there is. I read from that, all right? And in this King James, it shows that Messiah was in the synagogue or the temple on the seventh day, the Sabbath day. This is in the back of the book, all right? We in Mark. You can read it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can read it all the way through Acts. The Sabbath day. I don't know what doctrine your pastor or your leader is holding that got you flocking in some place on the first day. That's that man's doctrine. That's man-made doctrine. It's only one day, the seventh day. And for those who want to know what it is we supposed to be celebrating and acknowledging, read Leviticus 23, Numbers 9, Exodus 12, Deuteronomy 16. That will give you all the days that we as children of the Most High should uh, 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 be acknowledging. Here we go. Verse 41. And Yeshua HaMashiach sat over against the treasury, and behold, how the people cast money into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much. All right? All they did was give money. And there came a certain poor widow. She threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And she called unto him, and he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Truly I say unto you that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they have cast into the treasury, for all they cast in of the abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Many of us been through that in churchianity. Some dude standing in front of the people hollering about he hear the spirit saying that it's 50 people in here right now that's going to give a thousand dollars. Move, move, move while the spirits say move. And people are running, jumping, and moving. Look, repent, people. All right? Free will offering is free will offering. All right? And this word money here in this instance was entry number 5475 Chalkos. C H A L K O S. And it means money. All right. Our last stop for today.
I'll stop this in verse 11, but we read Mark 14, verses 1 through 72. <laughs> yes, Mark 14. After two days was the feast of Passover and of unleavened bread, and the chief Cohen and the scribes saw out how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leaper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there was some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Yeshua HaMashiach said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She have wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always. And whensoever ye shall well, ye may do them good. But me ye have not always. She have done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Truly I say unto you, wheresoever this glad tidings shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for memorial of her. And Yehuda Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief Cohen to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he saw how he might conveniently betray him. In the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where, where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou may eat the Passover? And he sent forth two of his disciples and said unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him, and wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house, the master says, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared there make ready for us. And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And in the evening he cometh with the twelve, and as they sat and did eat, Messiah said, Truly I say unto you, one of you which eats with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful and to say unto him, one by one, is it I? And another said, is it I? And he answered and said unto them, it is one of the twelve that dip with me in the dish. The son of man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. And as they did eat, Yeshua HaMashiach took bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Truly I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of Elohim. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And Yeshua HaMashiach said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. But Kepha said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. And Yeshua HaMashiach says unto him, Truly I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. But he spake the more vehemently, if I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said they all. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. 
And he said to his disciples, sit ye here while I shall pray. And he take with him Kepha and Yaqub and Yohanan and begin to be so amazed and to be very heavy and say unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death, tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Abba, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but thou, what thou will. And he come and finds them sleeping and said unto Kepha, Simon, sleepest thou? Could not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The Ruach truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed and spake the same words. When he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, neither wist they what to answer him. And he come the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough, the hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrayed me is at hand. And immediately while he yet spake, come Yehuda, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief Cohen and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he, take him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he was come, he goes straightway to him and says, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote a ebed of the high coin and cut off his ear. And Yeshua HaMashiach answered and said unto them, Are ye come out against, are ye come out as against a thief with swords and with staves to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and ye took me not, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled, and there followed him a certain young man having a linen cloth cast about his naked body, and the young man laid hold on him. And he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. And they led Yeshua HaMashiach away to the high Cohen, and with him were assembled all the chief Cohen and the Zakane and the scribes. And Kepha followed him afar off, even into the palace of the high Cohen. And he sat with the Ebeds and warmed himself at the fire. And the chief Cohen and all the council sought for witness against Yeshua HaMashiach to put him to death and found none. For many bear false witness against them, but their witness agreed not together. <laughs> and there arose certain and bear false witness against him, saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. <laughs> but neither so did their witness agree together. <laughs> and the high color stood up in the midst and asked Yeshua HaMashiach, saying, Answer thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But he held his shalom and answered nothing. Again, the high Cohen asked him and said unto him, Are thou the Messiah, the son of the blessed? And Yeshua HaMashiach said, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. When the high Cohen <laughs> ran, his, then the high Cohen ran his clothes and said, What need we any further witnesses? <laughs> Ye have heard the blasphemy, what think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to buffet him and to say unto him, prophesy and the Ebeds did strike him with the palms of their hands. And as Kepha was beneath in the palace, there comes one of the maids of the high Cohen. And when she saw Kepha woman himself, she looked upon him and said, uh, thou also was with Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth? But he denied, saying, 
I know not, neither understand I what thou says. And he went out into the porch and the cock crew. And the maid saw him again and began to say unto them that stood by, this is one of them. And he denied it again and a little after that they that stood by said again to Kepha, surely thou art one of them for thou art a Galilean and thy speech agrees there too. But he began to curse and to swear, <laughs> saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. And the second time the cock crew and Kepha called to mind the word that Yeshua Hamashiach said unto him before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me three times. And when he thought thereon, he wept. Hallelujah. Look, y'all, we got some stuff going on here. Man, look, money is money here. Verse 11, all right, 14, 11. All right, let's get this out of the way. Argu argue wrong. All right, A-R-G-U-R-I-O-N. It means cash money. Entry number 694. All right, leaders and young warriors. All right, listen, people are going to try to take a uh, uh, crafty counsel and uh, 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 try to seek to destroy your name and possibly you. Don't think it's strange, Okay. Very people you tried to help. You tried, you pour in, and you bent over backwards for. Once it don't, uh, uh, the Ruach, uh, 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 don't favor them in their mess, they're going to pull away from you and act as if they never knew you, and they're going to start their little campaign of lies, okay? This is why I was saying, me and my Isha both tell you, don't fall for the Hosanna, Hosanna, here come Ebed. Nah, shut your mouth, all right? Praise the name of the Most High. Because the very ones saying Hosanna, Hosanna are going to be the very ones saying, impale him, impale him. Oh, he was a false teacher. This was wrong. That was wrong. All of this and all of that, all right? Listen, you got to figure out who you want to uh, uh, receive uh, 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 or be celebrated by. You, you want to receive the celebration of well done, my good and faithful Ebed, stick on the side of truth, get the people blood off your hands. But if you want the side of man, you know, uh, uh, saying good job and all of this and all of that, but you're going to offend the most high. So you can't please both. All right. Always remember that. It's a lot going on in this chapter. Um, Verse 7, don't feel bad, people, uh, leaders, and young warriors. Don't feel bad if you ain't got no money to help everybody that come to you for money. Here, Messiah, these words are in red. For ye will have the poor with you always. All right? Very important that you be reminded of. Even the lady here in verses 1 through 5 who anointed his body for burial. The disciples murmured against her. So who is you where people ain't going to talk about you? All right? Be mindful of that. All right? Money was always money in this chapter. Um, 38 tells us flat out what it is, what the what is. Watch ye and pray lest ye enter in temptation, into temptation. The Ruach truly is ready but the flesh is weak. Try to get some people to understand you ain't ready for this, you ain't ready for this. Finally said, have at it. And it just took them to a whole nother level of uh, 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 falsehood in their lives because they spit on the very ones that uh, tried to show them the right way. The Most High will repent, okay? Um, you're going to have a lot of people coming up against you with false accusations, all right? Um, as we read here, uh, their witnesses agreed not together, verse 56, verse 59, their witnesses agreed not together, you know, just know that 
you know, you need to hold your peace. You don't have to respond to every little thing that comes across uh, 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 your, your sight path or your hearing. You don't have to respond to it. Very important that we be mindful of it. Let's pray. Father Yah, as we kneel before thy throne of mercy and grace, we ask that you would seal this, what we read in us, Father, faith come out here and here by the word. We read that Messiah was in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Allow those, Father, who worship whatever day they worship for to understand that they need to get back to the plain written word of the seventh day. We ask, Father Yah, right now that you would have mercy upon we, your children, right now, Father. Many have given money that you bless them with to everything but to the use of what you have uh, uh, birthed within them as far as uh, visions and goals and ideas, but they gave the money to the hiring. We ask, Father Yah, that you would receive repentance of us all, Father. And allow us wisdom, Father, to walk according to your election and purpose and use that money for what you've given it to us for. We ask, Father, that you will receive our forgiveness this day. Bless those who join us in this word in them. Allow them, Father, y'all to understand and know that we didn't orchestrate this for some Good Friday and some pagan Easter message and all. No, that we don't know how the scriptures are coming out, Father Yah. We just know what the topic is. We ask that you would continue to sanctify us all in thy word, for thy word is true, and set us apart in thy word, and allow us to have the wisdom to bear peace when those who try to oppose the word. We ask this in Yeshua HaMashiach's name we pray. Hallelujah. You all be blessed, be safe. Just know that we didn't contrive none of these scriptures. These are the orders in which the word money and money changers fell uh, in the um, lexicon. And this is all we do from the front of the book to the back of the book. But just know this. Better be wise with that money because it's going to come a day and time where uh, uh, the money ain't going to be worth anything. So you need to gather things now with it that's going to be worth something as the most high tarries. Shabbat shalom, everyone. You all be blessed. Be safe.